Over the years, there have been many different theories about what type of materials are best to use when making wire antennas. Some say you must use just plain copper, like uh, this little dipole here. And others say you can get away with things like this galvanized clothesline wire. It's a little bit hard to say what's best and it's quite subjective. But today we're going to try and put that to the test. We've collected about 10 different types of wire. We've turned them into dipoles and we're going to see which one is going to work best between two points under controlled conditions. We've set up a transmitting station consisting of two plastic posts and a signal generator as a source and we're going to do the experiments on the 15 metre band because around about 21 meg the antennas aren't too long and it made it a little bit easier to try out the different types of material. Uh, about 200 metres away down the field we've got a receiving station where we're going to try and pick up the signal from the signal generator and then swap to the different materials and see which one works the best for us. This is a little bit complicated because different materials are resonant on different parts of the band. You can cut antennas to the same length and they'll be resonant half a meg up, half a meg down. And if we're going to be making a lot of antennas and trying them out, they have to be all tuned to the frequency where we're doing our test. Otherwise the SWR figures will rise and that will affect the outcome at the receive end. So the first step was to cut 10 antennas exactly to 3.6 meters per leg, which is a little lower than our target frequency, around about 19 to 20 meg. Then with an antenna analyzer, we've been trying to find out what the resonant frequency is for each wire type on a given length. From that, we've been able to create a table where we've got a list of the different materials and how they resonate on different parts of the spectrum. And from that, we've got a set of offset lengths that we have to trim each antenna to make it resonant on exactly 21.2 meg. Then we can conduct our tests on the signal generator set to 21.2 and using the spectrum analyzer and a general purpose receiver at the receiving end, see what the difference in signals are going to be. At least that's the plan. We'll see how it works out. A lot's been written about the best materials to use in antennas. Many of these comments have referenced the resistivity of the metal used in the antenna wire, but resistivity is not the whole story. At radio frequencies, current flows at different depths into the materials. The higher the frequency, the further along the surface the current will flow. Another important aspect is the current and voltage distribution on an antenna. On a tuned antenna, the voltage potential will be at their highest at the end of the wire. But it's the current distribution that accounts for the energy radiated from the antenna, and this will be at its highest close to the feed point, falling to zero towards the end of the wire. To get a more accurate picture of how materials will really affect our transmissions, we need to do some experiments. We've got a lot of different materials to try today, about 10 of them. First there's the multi-strand copper, annealed, that's pretty common. Then there's the plastic coated version of it. Then there's some aluminium wire, 
we've tried some clothesline wire, some fencing wire, even some barbed wire. One of the wire types we're going to try today is this galvanised iron wire taken from the Overland Telegraph from a section of sand dunes and dirt from the Udnadatta track. So this piece is probably over 100 years old, but we've cut enough of it out to make a dipole for 15 metres. Our test site uses these 90 millimetre PVC pipes guyed up with plastic rope. This way we know that it's going to be non-conductive and won't affect our experiments. About 200 metres away you can see another pair set up for our receiving station. So we're just trimming this one down to size to get our uh, resonance on 21.2. Those side cutters used to have blue handles but a cow ate them. All right, that's another one done. We've set the antennas up for a fast changeover with wing nuts on the ballon and a separate piece of supporting plastic which allows them to just swap over very quickly from antenna to antenna without disturbing anything else. Each of these antennas are now resonant on our test frequency. So the only thing that's changing when we're going from antenna to antenna is the material of the antenna. Everything else remains the same and we'll be able to see very small changes on the screen of the receiver. This is antenna number two, which was originally PVC coated copper, multi-strand, um, about 2.5 square mil. But we pulled the plastic insulation off this one, so it's just bare copper. And it did affect the resonant frequency when we did that. Okay, Chris, how's the copy? You should have a signal. I do. Uh, minus 67, probably around about uh, 0 0.7. That, that did register as a 2 dB reduction, which is not very much. I don't think you would notice it on most radios, which are 6 dB per S point. This is antenna number three. It's three millimetres aluminium wire with a fine coat of paint on it. It was bought from Bunnings for the purposes of uh, shaping branches on bonsai trees, which is an interesting application. I never would have picked it, but that's where you can buy aluminium wire. It's actually quite good to work with. It's quite soft. It doesn't tangle as easy as the, some of the other wires and it's got a black coating on it, just enough to uh, reduce some corrosion. Uh, what's the sort of a reading did you get on this one? I'm, I'm, I'm a bit interested in this one because this is a completely different metal type, over. Exactly the same as the previous, floating around minus 67 point something. Uh, Roger. I'm seeing uh, 21.220, a nice dip, SWR of 1.6 to 1, and impedance is a little bit hard to see. I think it's 68 or 70. So uh, yeah, that's quite good. And the antenna trimming that we've done has uh, put us right in the middle of the dip. So uh, that's excellent. Very good. Onward. Roger. I should really have a bottle of, I don't know, a nice Italian red wine down here, I think. Number four will be the barbed wire. We might see a bit of a, a contrast with this one. Barbed wire is essentially high tensile steel with a uh, zinc coating. It's probably no different to regular fencing wire, but becomes relevant on a test here, just in case someone has visions of being able to tune up uh, a section of intact fencing. Okay, this one's ready to hoist up. That's the barbed wire done. I'm glad we're done with this one. I never want to use it again. I'd sooner trim the claws on an angry cat. This is clothesline wire, seven strand, steel galvanised, with a couple of lugs on it. Same as the others, it's been cut to be resonant on our working frequency. Let's see what it does for signal at the receive end. These PVC posts are all six metre lengths, which is about as much as you can comfortably cart on the roof of a car and they're inexpensive, they're under $20 a piece. So if you want to do it, 
a trial or even a temporary mast. It's not too bad a way to go. When we did our rhombic antenna at Antenna Palooza, we stacked a pair of these posts guide at two levels, which is okay as long as the winds are under 80 and 90 kilometers an hour. Unfortunately, we had 90 km per hour winds, which shattered some of the posts. That's okay, because we recycled the rhombic posts into an alpaca. Right, test number five, clothesline wire. My guess is, is that it's not going to be too different to the last one, which was the barbed wire. Start 68. So far, it, the, the range has been between 67 and 69. Dipole number seven is this fine stainless steel winch cable. It's only four millimetres, it's very flexible, it's easy to work with, and a lot of this sort of product does get used for commercial wire antennas. So let's see how it performs. Very good, I'm in position. Hopefully you're getting a reading about now. I'm betting it hasn't changed very much, over. No, look, it might be closer to 69 than 68. Uh, copy that. Okay, number eight is the PVC coated tie wire, the garden wire. And this is also featured in a few different designs I've seen in magazine articles. This tie wire is green, plastic coated and galvanized underneath. Fairly commonly used for tying up things in the garden, but uh, does also get used for wire projects. It's in an expensive thing to get from a hardware store. Let's see how it goes. Uh, 68.3. Yeah, not very much in it, is it? This wire is a little bit hard to see. It's welding wire for a MIG welder, 0.9 millimeter in diameter, copper coated. When I did my tests on the antenna analyzer, this one came up with a reasonably high impedance and high SWR, even though it was resonant. So I think it might perform poorly but let's try and find out. This MIG welding wire showed up on the analyzer as being 116 ohms and uh, with a slightly higher SWR. So it might be telling the story with this test. Over to you. Indeed it is at minus 71. Oh, so you're seeing quite a significant drop on that one, are you? 4 dB compared to the strongest. How about that? Okay, um, duly noted. And now we're coming up to the last one, which is the old uh, overland telegraph wire uh, taken from the side of the road uh, up near Udna Dada. You can see it's quite thick. I've measured it up at 4.5 millimetres. Put little tails on the end to try and get into the ballon, but I compensated for that when we cut the length. But it's very hard to work with. Okay, final reading. What do we see? Right, hang on. I would put that at, um, I'm going to say 69. Yeah, I think it does well by virtue of its larger diameter. Even though it is steel core, its larger diameter probably helps a little bit with impedance. Well, we'll go for a walk down the hill now. This location for our antenna tests today is the same venue where there have been uh, several antenna palooza events over the last seven or eight years. The receive station is pretty much the same setup, except that we put up a, a shade just to make things a bit easier to see the screen. We'll look at the data when you've uh, uh, passed on the notes, but from what I've been hearing over the air, it looks like there's very little variation between the wire types. I look a maximum of about 4 dB. Yeah. Quite surprising I was expecting a greater variation. So was I and I, I don't think that we could do the experiment and get any um, finer control than we, that what we've got here because on an S meter it would be hard to see those changes at all. Oh, that's right. At 6 that's dB right. per S point we'd yeah. be hardly seeing any variation on most bar graphs. So, most of them were 2 dB. So, yeah. Uh, for the most part negligible in, in practice. So that also tells us that it's probably the physical considerations which are the most important parts of wire antennas. That is, is it going to stay up in the air? Is it going to rust? Um, can it withstand the, you know, the strong winds and so forth? If it can do that, then it's probably worth, worth using. That's right. An antenna high, in the clear, and well maintained. Yep, and that's about what we've got to do. Okay, well, we'll um, wrap that up and uh, go from there. Perfect.